Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms, here to bring you the top five guns from John Wick 4. But before we roll into that, I'm going to let you guys know, first of all, spoiler alert. We are going to be talking a lot about this movie that's still only in theaters, and if you haven't seen it just yet, well, we're going to be talking about scenes that you probably don't want spoiled. So if you haven't seen it yet, be warned or beware, or whatever. Anyway, just wanna also let you guys know that, hey, you're gonna see a lot of content and trademarks that are not ours. We're not affiliated with any company that includes Lionsgate or Summit Entertainment. We're not sponsored by any of these companies or affiliated with. We just wanna take a deep dive into the content and the guns from John Wick Chapter Four. So without further ado, let's roll into my number five pick. For my number five pick, if you've seen the movie, then you already know that the bad guys come rolling in with what looks like to me, some Mark 18s, all right? There's a, quite a few of them that come rolling in and it's like, okay, they're all got these suppressed shorty M4s. Could they be Mark 18s? Maybe. I tried doing a lot of deep digging on the interwebs and I couldn't exactly find exactly what rifle, short barreled rifle, whatever it might be. So I'm taking what looks to be, to me, the AR or at least a M4 or at least possibly one of my favorites, the Mark 18. Now you do notice that they do have what looks like an aim point sitting right on top. From the couple of glimpses that I could get from it, it looked possibly like the Comp M5, which is ultimately like the Pro, but smaller. And then on top of that, they are suppressed, which we've talked a lot about silencers on this channel. And of course, why wouldn't you wanna be utilizing one of these? If you ever got the option or the opportunity to shoot one of these full auto, then you'll see why it's probably a choice for some of the baddies in the movie to try to go after uh, John Wick with. But there's a reason why it's kinda of low on my list. One, can't confirm that's exactly what it is. And two, well, it's not featured that often. Unlike my number four pick, which is featured heavily at the end of the movie. Which leads us to the Thompson Center Arms Encore. Now this pistol that you see here, they're pretty much made up as a dueling pistols in the movie. You see Kane, uh, who's actually not, he's kind of an antagonist, kind of a protagonist. He kind of plays both sides a little bit there, but he's definitely... He's got a history with our buddy John Wick, uh, but you see in this, they actually have to step 30 paces back. They load one round, which is all that this breech loading pistol can have in it. And well, a gentleman's sport of dueling it is. And if you've ever seen this type of dueling, well, dueling isn't kind of like what we've been known to see in Hollywood, which is, you know, you walk and then you're the first person to turn around and shoot the fastest wins. No, dueling back in the day was exactly like what you saw here at John Wick 4, where you had guys literally take aim at each other and pull the trigger and, well, whoever's left standing is the victor. I know, I think there was like a famous politician that died that way, I think like Hamilton or something. Anyway, uh, but when you look at these, when you look at the caliber, you can definitely tell that it's no small caliber. I personally think maybe it's 45 Long Colt. Uh, you guys let me know down in the comment section what you think it might be, but these dueling pistols are definitely custom, they're engraved, they look really good. But at the end of the day, they're actually really affordable Thompson Center Arms Encore pistols. So there you go, get yourself a pair of dueling pistols and the next time you have an argument with a family member, just pull, pull those out and that's not legal advice, don't do that. Number three. My number three pick, the Marlin 1894. Now, before you guys say anything, I know you're already thinking, Clint, that's not an 1894, that's an 1895 SBL. Yes, it is. I don't have an 1894, nor do I have one that is actually done out by Mad Pig Customs. That's the cool little takedown that you see Mr. Nobody use. Chambered in 44 Magnum, this thing is an absolute beast. First of all, it's a takedown Marlin lever gun, 1894, chambered in 44 Magnum. What more do you need? Excess sights and everything else. And it appears at the end of the muzzle, he does have a three chamber break that is set up for QD. And one scene near the Arc de Triomphe, he is actually shooting it suppressed. And that's the only scene that I actually recall seeing it shot suppressed. There's a lot of action in this movie. Surprisingly, not a lot of guns when you think about it. Uh, but I will say that this was an iconic firearm that was used all throughout the movie by Mr. Nobody. And of course, his loyal companion, the dog that you see that saves him and John Wick multiple times. So uh, yeah. Again, Mad Pig Customs, that takedown of the Model 1894 by Marlin is just super sweet. Maybe we could send our 1895 to get done the same way. Uh, I don't know if you guys would be happy about that because I really like the laminated stock and all that type of stuff and this has a really good look to it. But anyway, it does also feature the same excess sights though, however, which I am a really big fan of. The peep sight in the rear, just that same circle sight that you have in the rear with that nice 
vertical white line does pick up very nicely. And the Picatinny right on top, so you can throw on your magnified optic red dot or whatever. Just ask Chris Pratt in Jurassic World what he did. For my number two pick, the Terran Tactical Industries Pit Viper. Now, what I have here in front of me is actually the Springfield Armory Prodigy because that's the closest thing I got to it. Some of you guys are going to be like, well, that's insulting. Yeah, you're right. But it is still, at the end of the day, a 2011, which is ultimately what the Pit Viper is as well. And if you haven't seen the Pit Viper, it is a menacing-looking pistol. It is, first of all, it's called the Pit Viper because Terran actually designed it to have fangs, believe it or not. And uh, what I mean by that is, if you'll notice, that... These guys sitting right up here on the 2011 on the Prodigy that you see here by Springfield Armory, they sit out and they could be protruding some. However, the guide rod is actually kind of blocking that. Well, what you'll notice is that in the movie, uh, John Wick removes the slide and the barrel assembly and he actually uses that as a weapon to start, you know, killing people with, which is pretty entertaining. Uh, but anyway, so the Pit Viper, again, a 2011, highly customized and pretty much just designed by Terran. Uh, taking ultimately that 2011 frame, that double stack 9mm design that you see right here. If you notice those uh, silver and color magazines that John Wick's carrying on his belt, those are 2011 mags because, well, it is a 2011 at the end of the day. Hammer fired, fantastic triggers outside of the box, or right out of the box. However, with Terran's touch, he goes in there and makes it a pretty awesome gun. Now, with all that being said, you also notice too that there's actually no red dot in this movie. Uh, looks like uh, John's opting for the you know, old faithful iron sights, which is why we've got this one set up just like that. So let me know what you guys think about that. You're probably wondering like, wow, that gun is used all throughout the movie, almost. Why wouldn't that be your number one? Well, you'll see what my number one is here in just a moment. But before that, I want to do, I do want to have one honorable mention and no, it's not the nunchucks, which are used heavily, uh, but it's actually one that you see from John Wick 2 and that's the Glock 34 Combat Master, which is a pretty awesome little setup, especially with, and we've actually interviewed Taryn uh, on the podcast, and also if you're not following our podcast channel, you should see a podcast, but he really actually goes into detail uh, when we were at the NRA annual meet this past year, and we're at Save Your Equipment's booth, and we actually interviewed Taryn, and we have his Combat Master, his Pit Viper, his Sand Viper, which is like the, the, the really expensive one, like the $7,000 one. Uh, but anyway, that ultimately hearing him talk about it, you hear his passion and pretty much his genius behind the guns. Uh, then, like I said, John Wick 2, we've got the Glock 34 Combat Master, which is an awesome competition setup. And while we were talking with Taren, he was actually developing his own trigger. And then he tried Timney's trigger. No trigger beats the freaking new trigger from Timney. Yeah. It's oh, done. Yeah, yeah. I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. I was making a trigger. I was almost done. And then that came out. Okay. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to scrap all this money and time, four years of time, because this is system and design. So we, part, we, we work together now. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just work with you guys. You're there. You beat me to the finish line. Yeah. But we're going to take this next level. And he's right. He stopped development of his own trigger because this one's just going to be super hard to beat. In fact, I'll just go ahead and show you guys this trigger right now. You'll notice that we will have just a little bit of take up, more of that uh, flat surface area also. A little bit of take up, nice and smooth. It's not like your typical Glock trigger. And then the reset is just a little bit of travel before you hit a very nice reset and then you're ready to rock it again. Fantastic trigger and I can see why Taryn decided I'm just not going to further design my own trigger because that one is going to be really, really hard to beat. So pretty cool if you ask me. That's my honorable mention and let's go ahead and roll into my number one pick. My number one pick is uh, pretty freaking special because I actually have been able to shoot this one on full auto and it is the Genesis AR-12 with, of course, the TTI Touch. This thing is impressive. And the reason it's my number one, even though it's not as heavily featured, well, that's not true. It is heavily featured in one scene, but it's not used all throughout the movie like the Pit Viper is, among other couple of other guns. But the one scene that I'm talking about is you see John Wick absolutely, well, he picks up this gun from a, from a bad guy and then starts wrecking people with Dragon's Breath. If you don't know what Dragon's Breath is, it's ultimately the flaming shotgun rounds. They have a short range to them, but they are pretty devastating. They pretty much ignite your target on fire. 
what more do you want, right? Uh, on top of that, you've also still have the shotgun effect of, you know, having shot thrown at you. That sucks. Now they're on fire. Now you're on fire with a bunch of holes in you. Bad day, right? So you got to stop the bleed and put out the fire, which, yeah, it's, it's just a rough life if you get hit with one of those. And you see that done very well in this scene. It's this beautiful top-down shot. It looks like you're playing a video game almost. I wonder if they did that for a reason. And it's kind of like, oh my god, this these absolute impacts. You see these hits. You see this, the, the hits on the walls and everything else, and it's just a really good time. And in that same interview that we had with Taryn at NRA Annual Meet, he actually sees Cody, a guy from Genesis, uh, and says, hey, how about this? I'm just going to go ahead and bring him in. Give me the mic. I'm going to do the interview now and starts interviewing Cody all about the Genesis AR-12, why they use key mod, for instance. <laughs> and then and then the ultimate gun, like the yeah. ultimate scene, one of the greatest action scenes ever filmed that I've ever seen is when he's got the pit viper and he shreds a bunch of fools to get to the Genesis and he's going back and forth transitioning. Yep. If you watch it, I've seen it a bunch of times. He's loading pretty much after every 10 rounds. Um, he, they're shooting Dragon's Breath with the buckshot in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he's just blowing the crap out of all these bad guys, blowing them through walls. Like, because we know we did Benelli's forever and they're amazing. Yeah. Benelli and John Wick 2, Gen, uh, uh, M4, Benelli and John Wick 3, the M2, three gun gun, exact yes. three gun gun, right? Quad loading, right. the whole thing. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, what's next level? Right. What's going to destroy it? This destroys it. So. Yes. Oh, dude, I know. So I got to actually shoot the full auto, and that was incredible, man. That, I'm holding myself. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there, you're good. But yeah, absolutely incredible design. You guys killed it with this as well. Feels amazing. The Genesis, yeah. You, I, They're I right love it. there. Yes. So you get an Uber from here to there. Yeah. Call your Uber. Get a ride here to get to Genesis all the way over there. There, you there go. he is. Get over here. Yeah. There we go. There Perfect. He is, giant man. He should have been yeah. John Wick. Yeah. <laughs> right. Take him down. Yeah. Ask yeah. him. Interview him. Yeah, dude. So tell us about the Genesis, man. Just go for it. Uh, well, if you're not familiar with the Gen 12 as it's like as a host weapon it's a short recoil operated yeah. gun so you eliminate a piston and you eliminate the uh, direct impingement so it immediately increases your performance wow. and the reason for that is is if you think about it if the barrel moves yeah. how that happens is the one the wad leaves the muzzle that creates the energy for the cycle of operation right well if i have a hole in my barrel and I'm shooting plastic down it, it's gonna act like cheese on a grater. Yep. So plastic and lead goes right in there. We delete that from the system. So immediately you have reliability of a pump gun, and then in the whole so holistic system together gives it the feel of a Benelli or Breda. Yeah, dude, well, it's a fantastic idea too. It's, for those of you that don't know, it's the same type of operation like the Barry M82 has, that short, that short recoil system. So having gotten to shoot that, or having been able to shoot that, yeah. fantastic shooter, man. Yeah. So here's the yeah. elephant in the room. So I post the gun, like, he's got key mod. Oh my God, I'm keyboard commander. Where's the M lock? Oh my God. Okay, let's, let's address why it's on there. Yeah. Once and for all for these yes. trolls. <laughs> so, key mod, <laughs> it actually allows, here, I'll hold it. No, 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 no. I'm like, I keep going wrong. So the key mod actually, we have a, a buffer system on our barrel because it's moving. Yeah. And that helps eat up the slamming of the barrel into the receiver. So that weight, if you impede that weight, then you defeat the the, the system that's in place right. so you can't do that so on our m lock versions you end up filling those in and you lose the ability to come back here with uh, hand stops or vertical grips but you'll see when i grab onto this the natural point you'd yeah. want to be mounted towards the rear right. key mod doesn't interfere with it at all so it allows us to get that mount right in there that's interesting so yeah. there you go and so all in all we get like the, ma the the two masterminds behind some of the most popular firearms in this movie talking about the guns right there on camera all in one interview, which is pretty cool. So again, check out our NRA annual meet footage. Anyway, we'll leave it off there. If there are some guns, if you've seen the movie, let me know what your thoughts are down below. I thought it was done very, very well. Uh, love Keanu Reeves, who doesn't? And on top of that, um, did you guys notice that there was one other gun that really caught me by surprise? It didn't really make my list because I only noticed it once, but it did throw me off because I was like, is that a Thompson? Like a Tommy gun that's really heavily done, like with M-Lock and all sorts of other stuff and like red dots and stuff? Just, if, if you missed it the first time, I hate to make you go spend more money if, you know, for Hollywood and whatnot, but you're supporting, you know, gun stuff, so that's cool. Uh, just. Go back and watch that and let me know if you caught where you saw the Thompson submachine gun that was like very modernized. 
Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments section. And again, do you agree with the list? Disagree? Think it should be restructured somehow? Let me know and I'll probably respond to you about how you're wrong down in the comments section. We each have our opinions, right? Just mine's more right, okay? I'm just kidding. Take a joke. Anyway, I'll leave it off there, guys. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at Classic Firearms.